Yeah, we're going to talk some more about uh, line boring here um, <clears throat> without doing line boring. So when you're setting up, you'll use bearings. Have your shaft, it'll slide in and out. This piece of shaft I just got laying here, I don't know where my bar is that fits this bearing. This is a bearing I've used with line boring before. Um, one of the ways a lot of people will line these up in a hole is they will use cones. And that's real common. You'll have a cone that fits the shaft. It's tapered. And you put it into your bore. So the cone would go into your bore, line up your, uh, your shaft, and then you put your bearing on there. Those are kind of a problem um, because even if you have a cone that's the right size, if it's the wrong size, it will be in your way to where you can't get the uh, bearings and everything where you want them. Another thing is that if the hole is worn, if you've got a hole that's worn more than halfway around, now that cone slides off to the worn side. And you could try and keep it straight, but it won't really stay straight. If you have a surface that's not square, it will mess with you too. A lot of times you have machines where the surface is not square to where the hole is going through. And so that cone won't work. If you're doing this, uh, one of the other ones you do is you use a actual disc. You machine a disc that fits in whatever part of the, the hole is still good that's round that centers your bar. So it's just a ring, fits the outside, fits your bar. Another way that you do that is you put your bearings in in some place just somewhere close, and then you figure you will move them. You can attach an indicator to your bar and sweep it around just like you would on a machine. That's the hardest, that's the least likely for people to do. It's one of the very accurate ways to do it though. Um, there's also people that have made various spiders, and a friend of mine, his dad that was a tool and die maker, made him a whole set of this, these spiders for line boring because he did all kinds of line boring. His dad was tool and die maker uh, and he was also heavy equipment mechanic. I've never seen the set, but it had got, it had a different centers for different size bars and some different little spacers. And then a final part where you put gauge blocks in it to make it exactly the size you want it and you drop it in your hole. And he said it was so pretty and beautiful. He said he's never used it. He's, he didn't want to mess it up. His dad's passed away. He wanted to keep it. He's never used it out in the field with heavy equipment because he didn't want to mess it up. He said some friend of his that saw it was going to get it when he passes away. But um, I just heard about it. I've never seen that one. But they make, you need some kind of a centering device one way or another. And of course, to be able to center it, this one here is uh, this particular one. What I did with this one, the plate is tapped and the holes for the bearings, you can see part of it here, we could have pulled out the bolt, but they're cut way out to a larger square, just like these ones here. Now these ones, you could bolt through and have movement too. Somehow you need it so that when you bolt them on, you have movement. If you're using an indicator, it's real common, you come up here and you put some set screws or set bolts to be able to carefully, easily move your bearing around as you need to, to get them lined up. The uh, thing I was talking about with lining up was if this bearing itself aligns, but it takes a little bit of movement to align it. There's a little bit of movement there that you have in the bearing beyond what it takes to move it. So you actually have to move it a little bit further than what just pulling it is to get it to uh, loosen up. So what I was saying was after you have your bar and everything in here and it doesn't want to slide, just take and just tap. Just, just with the bar in there, just tap around it. And which I'm not there to where I can get that easily, but it would be where it's, where it's free. Just tap around it and the fact that you're vibrating that, if the bar, let's say the bar is, is to this side, it's going this way, so the bearing would need to move this way to match the bar. So if the bearing needed to mat go that way, if you hammer on this side here, what'll happen is it'll come against the solid steel on the bar, because it's already loaded on that side, and it won't move. It'll just sit there and just tap and rattle the bar. The bar's got mass to it. But if you hit the side that is 
uh, that needs to be moved, it'll move a couple thousands. And it's just really quick. You just tap around this, and you can use a, a brass drift sometimes too. I said brass hammer. It's been a while since I've actually done this line boring. Yeah, brass hammer and so, a brass drift some places to get into it, same as uh, other stuff. So that helps you square that up. Now, another thing also, when you're doing all of this line boring, very, very critical that uh, guys don't catch on to it first. The plates that you're welding onto, because you're, you're going to take your plates at the bearing statue, you're going to be welding these onto a bucket, a frame of a machine, some piece of iron. And when you do that, let's say that we weld this onto our bucket and we leave a little gap here. When we weld this, it's going to pull and it's going to be in a different position. If we put it up here, it's going to pull and be in a different position. And sometimes you don't have as much movement as what you want or you want to just weld it and leave it there and not reposition it. So when you're doing this stuff, you really have to think about that pulling or not pulling. So say that we were putting this on here and we want it for pulling in and out, making it strong this way. What we'd want to do is put this on here, run a bead on the inside of this. It'll pull in a little bit and set next to this, but it won't really move it. Then put a bead on the outside, and then we put a bead in here while it's already setting here. It'll just try and pull it a little bit tighter sideways, but it's not going to suck it away. Same thing if we're stressing a piece coming off this way. You don't put it up like this and weld it. You overlap it a little bit. On this one, I'd want to overlap it underneath. Weld this piece first, get it so it's close here, and then your last weld right there. So there's nothing that's pulling a lot. It's just pulling sideways. So always think about where's going to be the last weld that's going to do the least amount of pulling as far as moving your piece. Sometimes you just got all kinds of stuff struck, uh, set up. And let's say we're like this, and you don't have another piece of steel. Well, you're going to weld up beads on here and purposely leave a little slag in between these two. Just build up some welds, leave the slag. Do not attach to this. And then let everything cool off and then bridge your weld over there after you chip the slag out. Somehow you, you need to get it so that uh, I've done that on, because some of the boring rigs I've worked with, you didn't have a way to adjust them afterwards. You just had a bearing that bolted down and there's always a little slop in the holes. But a uh, few little things I was thinking of that might help people while I was watching the other line boring uh, video. I'm sure if I was actually out here doing line boring, but since it costs us more out of our day making videos than what we get for them by far, uh, until we are actually line boring, we're not gonna show real line boring. Uh, I was starting to set up one job, would have been really a good job to show, and because we were trying to make it more to where we could show it, we lost the job, actually. The customer said you had to have, to have it back. They needed it sooner than what I originally thought. So uh, don't know if we'll ever do one like that or not. <laughs> Here. Um, it would have been a nice one to show. Uh, I thought I had a few more things to say, but anyway, a couple, couple little things about it. Uh, it is important to get these centered. Make sure you're, you're concentrating on how your welds are pulling and get your bearings centered up. They need to rotate and slide around like this one here. This bar is slightly bigger than a boring bar regularly would be. This is a full one and three quarter inch bar, so it's, it's tight. That, that would never work. You need to be able to slide it through. And I guess that's all as far as a couple extra things to mention today.